now I was telling us about the measure that we have to take away the bridge. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining the Historic Preservation Commission meeting of October the 7th. I will call us to order. Um, Paul, would you call the roll, please? Alan Brown. Jennifer Bourne. Present. Heather Clemmer. Present. Neela Crank Clement. Greg Eddington. George Massey. Present. Mary Jo Meacham. Present. Jeffrey Parks. Present. Ann Zacharitz. You have a quorum. Great. Thank you. Meeting process, public uh, procedures, uh, the chairman, I will, uh, the chairman today, will announce each case um, and ask the party having interest to indicate their presence by raising their hands. Uh, we will then discuss the case up at the, the commission, uh, call on staff to provide uh, details, questions that we might have. Uh, after that discussion, we may choose to ask questions of the applicant or the staff. Um, interested persons that wish to speak in support or protest of the application, um, 
may then come forward. Uh, you'll have the opportunity for a brief rebuttal. Uh, interaction between applicant and protest is not permitted on the floor. Um, keep everybody nice to each other. Um, uh, please approach the center podium one at a time. Introduce yourself. Be sure you put your name and address on the pad there at the podium. Um, following the hearing, the commission, we will take one of the following four actions. We will either approve the certificate of appropriateness, two, continue the proposal, three, deny the proposal with prejudice, which means the application may not be resubmitted for at least one year unless the commission determines that circumstances have changed, or four, deny the application without prejudice, which means that the applicant may reapply at any time. Uh, when the application has been approved uh, in that instance, after a 10-day protest period has expired, the historic preservation officer will mail the CA to the applicant, and city construction permits cannot be issued until the CA has been issued. Uh, any person aggrieved by any decision granting or denying a CA uh, may appeal to the Oklahoma City Board of Adjustment. Uh, all appeals shall be made within 10 days of the commission decision uh, by filing written notice with the clerk's office. All right, uh, from the Office of the Historic Preservation Officer. Um, just a reminder that we have an uh, all commission committee workshop planned for December 11th. Um, that is a repeat of what we had um, a year ago for all of our different design review committees and HP commission. Um, and then this isn't on our list, but I wanted to remind everybody, you kind of refresher from um, some past meetings, that as you're making motions, um, if you are making the motion that is in the staff report, you can just say, motion to approve or whatever as stated in the staff recommendation and don't have to read the whole paragraph out. So we'll move along a little more quickly that way. But please, if you are not agreeing with the staff recommendation, make sure you pick and choose your findings and make sure it all lines up with what you're intending to approve. Right, acceptance of the minutes from the September 2nd meeting. Are there any comments or corrections from that meeting? If not, I would entertain a motion. I move to accept the minutes. Second. Second. Thank you. <laughs> I have a motion from George Massey, second from Jennifer Bourne. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, minutes are approved. Code enforcement report. Welcome, Good Greg. How are you? Good. Any comments or questions for Greg? It's a long list. Good one. Oh, well, great. Love thanks it. For, thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> we are just full of chatter today. You have my email and phone numbers. Appreciate it. All right, continuance announcements and requests. There were none before the meeting. Are there any new requests? We have one new request to continue 15-00086 to the December 2nd meeting. What number of hours is that? It is number two, under cases for individual consideration. Number two, Chartel. To December 2nd. I have a motion to continue that. I make a motion to continue 15-00086 to the December 2nd meeting. Second. I have a motion from Heather Clemmer, second from Jennifer Bourne to continue. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. That item is continued. Dilapidated structures, none this month on our public hearings. Uh, we do have one uh, National Register nomination. Uh, as a certified local government, the City of Oklahoma City gets to review any properties that are um, any properties in Oklahoma City that are nominated to the National Register of Historic Places. A nomination has been prepared um, for the property owner by a consultant for Lincoln Plaza Historic District. Um, this is in anticipation of using historic tax credits. Um, Lincoln Plaza has um, an identified um, period of significance of 1966 to 1974. It was developed as part of post-war expansion of Oklahoma City outside of the downtown with uh, you know, automobile-oriented um, kind of development patterns and used, was developed by a local developer, local architects, incorporating um, new formalism, architectural styles into a variety of different designs and different buildings at the site. Um, 
You've got a very extensive uh, National Register nomination that's been prepared that hopefully everybody had the opportunity to read. I think it's a really um, interesting site to see it come back to life and, and be redeveloped. And I'll just quickly read the resolution that was developed. Uh, resolution of the City of Oklahoma City Historic Preservation Commission recommending the Lincoln Plaza Historic District as eligible for listing in the National Register of Historic Places, whereas the Lincoln Plaza Historic District is located within the incorporated area of the City of Oklahoma City at 4345-4545 North Lincoln Boulevard and 416 Northeast 46th Street, whereas the National Register of Historic Places nomination demonstrates the importance of the Lincoln Plaza Historic District to the history and culture of Oklahoma City, whereas the Lincoln Plaza Historic District is locally significant in the area of community planning and development, whereas the Lincoln Plaza Historic District was developed by John Lewis and is an exceptionally significant example of a state and locally supported development initiative at a key turning point for the post-war development of Oklahoma City, whereas the Lincoln Plaza Historic District was designated by, designed by local architectural team Jones, Hester, Bates, and Rick as an example of local of an excellent local example of new formalism and incorporates varied but cohesive architectural forms and materials into a large scale site design. Whereas the Lincoln Plaza Historic District National Register of Historic Places nomination prepared by Catherine Montgomery AIA Preservation and Design Studio on behalf of the property owner Lincoln Plaza 261 LLC is an accurate and scholarly written document. Whereas this action is consistent with the provisions of Chapter 59, Sections 3302.2 of the Historic Preservation Ordinance, contained in the Zoning and Planning Code, Oklahoma City, Municipal Code 2010, now therefore be it resolved by the Historic Preservation Commission that the nomination of the Lincoln Plaza Historic District to the National Register of Historic Places is hereby recommended for approval to the Mayor and City Council, the Oklahoma Historic Preservation Review Committee, the State Historic Preservation Officer, and the Keeper of the National Register. Catherine Montgomery AIA Preservation and Design Studio is commended for their documentation of this important resource, which is representative of Oklahoma City culture and heritage. Lincoln Plaza 261 LLC is commended for their commitment to the preservation of the Lincoln Plaza Historic District and the history and culture represented by this important resource. Um, I believe the uh, representative of the, um, the consultant that prepared the nomination is here, as is staff from the State Historic Preservation Office. Anyone has questions? Thank you, Katie. Any comments or questions? It's shocking but not unrealistic to realize that things that are dated within my time frame on this earth are part of a National Register uh, <laughs> nomination, but that can happen. And the fact that there is one building in the complex that's obviously been modified beyond uh, away from its historic, that, that still does not impact the... Yeah, I think there's enough. I'll let Linda speak to that, to the um, integrity issues. Linda Ozan, State Historic Preservation Office, 800 Nazizuti Drive, Oklahoma City. Uh, we evaluated the property quite extensively when it was first brought to us. We were just looking at the hotel and we realized we needed to evaluate the entire complex as a historic district rather than individually because those properties are all so tied closely together in terms of their development and their time frame. So based on just one having been altered, there was enough characteristics in all of the other buildings and objects and structures to carry forward with the integrity of the site. Very good. Thank you. So. Any further questions or comments? Otherwise, I would entertain a motion. I move that we recommend the nomination of Lincoln Plaza Historic District, the Mayor, City Council, Oklahoma Historic Preservation Review Committee, State Historic Preservation Officer, and Keeper of the National Register, and adopt the resolution provided as part of the staff report. Second. I have a motion from Neela Crank Clemens and a second from Heather Clemmer. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Um, right. That pushes us on to the consent docket. We have three items on the consent docket. Um, the commission can choose to pull anything if you have uh, questions about uh, what's proposed. Any items you'd like to pull? Otherwise, I'd entertain a motion to approve the consent docket. I motion to approve the consent docket. Second. 
A motion from Jennifer Bourne, second from Neela Crank Clements to approve the consent docket. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. If you are on the consent docket, um, you've been approved and you're free to, free to go. So thank you for coming. <laughs> Moving on to cases for individual consideration. HBCA 15 0061 at 2233 Northwest 28th Street, Shepherd Ward 2, consideration and possible action on application of Josh Corey by RA Construction Group, Inc., for certificate of appropriateness to one, replace metal garage door elective, two, replace aluminum wrap at window and trim elective, and three, replace aluminum siding elective. Um, you have a um, recommendation to continue this one, although I think they actually are out of continuances. But we had a little miscommunication with the applicant on um, what they thought they'd already submitted to us and what staff didn't think they had yet. We do now have an appropriate wood siding replacement, an appropriate wood garage door. Um, they're going to repair the window trim underneath the wraps. So um, it's all stuff that if we'd gotten it the day before yesterday, we would have administratively approved it. Uh, so I think if the commission doesn't have questions about that, we could approve it on the condition that those additional items that have been submitted to staff be incorporated into the CA. So moved. <laughs> Second. I have a motion for approval from Mila Craig Clements and a second from Jennifer Bourne. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. All right. Next case. Uh, the item number two on your docket has been continued, so that puts us at item uh, 6D3. HPCA 15-00095 at 714 Northwest 18th Street, Mesta Park, Ward 6. Consideration and possible action on application of Jared Smith, LLC, for certificate of appropriateness to 5 replace driveway, elective. Staff had recommended a continuance here. Um, to deal with some of the site sloping issues and impact on the neighbor, if that's, if I understand that right. Is the applicant present today? Is there anyone else here wishing to speak on this application today? Has staff talked to the applicant? Um, Angela, what's the last interaction you've had with them at this point? I don't think we've gotten anything additional from them about addressing the concerns for the driveway, the retaining walls, that sort of thing. Was it primarily the retaining walls? Or um, yes, I think that was a major concern. Is that the the where they're planning to put the driveway looks like they're not going to be able to do that without doing damage to historic retaining walls, and they haven't really addressed um, the replacement, the replacement, and how how that's going to be handled. Would they have to replace the retaining wall if it was damaged? Um, there's, a, there's a drop from their yard to the neighbor's yard, so something needs to be um, addressed. Something needs to be done there to keep yeah. that stable and not have it fall over into the, the neighbor's there's property. There's a taller? Um, yes, there's, it's taller on their side and drops to the neighbor's. Yeah. So, if, Katie, if we continue it, what, what date would that be? Uh, either November 4th or December, you think December, December 2nd. Which would you prefer? Yeah, I think that gives them more time. Second. December 2nd. Okay. Yep. Then I move to continue HPCA 15-00095 to December 2nd. Second. Motion from Neela Crank Clements, second from Jennifer Bourne to continue. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That is continued. HPCA 15 00097 at 916 Northwest 40th Street, Crown Heights, Ward 2. Consideration and possible action on application of Andy Batucci, Manager for Lucky Investments, LLC, for certificate of appropriateness to 5 Construct Garage, elective, 13 Convert Back Windows to French Doors, elective, 14 Relocate Back Windows to Second Story of Structure, elective, 15 Alter Back Porch Roof, elective, and 16 Construct Back Deck, elective. Hi. Staff had recommended approval on items 13, 14, 15, approval with conditions on item 5, and a continuance on item number 16. So, good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Andy Bitucci, and I'm the owner of 
the property. Right. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Right. So there are a number of items on the list. If one can tackle <coughs> anyone on the first, anyone have any particular questions? This was a case that was continued, right, a month or two ago? Is that right? Yes, Katie? we saw this a month ago and approved several items um, and had continued the garage, so they made changes to the proposed garage um, and then added a couple of additional items as well. Okay, thanks. I would move to approve <coughs> HPCA 150097, items 13, 14, and 15. As okay, I'm supposed to say this case. stated in the staff report. as stated in the staff report. Second. I have a motion from Joe Meacham, second from Jennifer Bourne to approve 13, 14, and 15. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Great. So that takes care of those three. Do we want to jump to the garage or to the back porch? Uh, staff. <clears throat> on the, I think it's the deck. Okay. Is, is the item, is that the other continued item? Did you receive any additional information? Um, no, we hadn't, but between the time when we got the staff report written and it went out to y'all, we haven't got anything else. So. Do you have any additional information in regards to the materials and the design of the railing and the steps of the deck? Sure. Um, since then, we've decided to, I think, go back and think about the composite material. I think we actually want to go and use wood instead. Um, comes out to be cheaper, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you uh, if you do it right and prep it right, then it can actually last longer. Which at the time I thought composite would last longer, and that was the only reason for okay. that. So we're going to go back and do wood instead. On the railing, um, we just, just want to continue to... this and, and bring back a second design with I materials. Can. No problem. The the one other question that staff had had on it that we'll can follow up with you on is that in the elevation drawing, it looks like the deck um, goes where there is currently a raised patio. Um, and it wasn't clear to staff oh. whether that patio was going away and being right. replaced by the deck or what that relationship Correct. was. No, the current patio stays. The patio stays. Nothing's going to be done to the patio. The only thing we may do to the patio is continue the deck on top of it, basically. Be underneath. Yeah, the, the patio would be, the, the concrete would be underneath and just continue. So it will be all one... Um, level pretty much not have a step down we'll get with you after the meeting That's and, fine. and figure out what else we need <clears throat> That's yeah. good. Great. thank you and just for my information was it yeah. trex versus wood that you were considering i was yes what yeah. percentage difference was the trex over the wood it was about three ballpark. times more expensive yeah. much? to do composite three times, three times. Three times. <clears throat> and we found out that if we buy treated lumber and we stain it and we protect it, it would be cheaper and it would last probably longer. Interesting. And if you've seen any of the seats around the city where they use composite, it really bows. It, it does. <laughs> so it doesn't last as long as they say. Hmm. So we could continue that to November 4th or to December 2nd? We have, because we're getting into holiday season, we have to be really, really tight on getting documentation in. So if it's November 4th, then we've got to have everything from you by Tuesday of next week. Okay. We'll just need to get together and okay. figure out what exactly I need to provide, and I will. No problem. We'll try November 4th. Okay. okay. November 4th. Yeah. We're coming into cold weather, so waiting for December. Right. Um, I move to continue HPCA 1500097, item 16, to the November 4th meeting. Second. Motion from Mary Jo Meacham, second from Jennifer Bourne, to continue item 16. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Continue that item. That leaves us with item 5, construct garage. 
staff had recommended some conditions. And I think the only condition was that um, a door be specified, and the applicant did email me with a standard um, nine light in the upper half wood door um, for the pedestrian door at the garage. So I believe that was our only um, concern with the garage. Can I move to approve HPCA 15-00097, item 5, to construct garage with no conditions? Second. Motion from Neela Craig Clements. Second from uh, Jennifer Bourne to approve item number 5. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. That item is approved. Thank you. Thank you. HPCA 15-00110 at 2137 Northwest 27th Street, Shepherd Ward 2. Consideration and possible action on application of Kenneth Johnson for a certificate of appropriateness to one, replace siding on garage door required, two, replace garage entry door required, and three, report driveway required. Um, this was heard at the September 2nd meeting and staff has not received any additional information at this time. Um, I believe the property has changed hands, so I think we have a representative here to speak. Right. Uh, my name is Donald Pelkey. I'm the new owner of the property. I took possession on 724, and it looks like from the application, this was brought to you on 721. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what I need to do to get the certificate of appropriateness for my new home. In the in the uh, neighborhood, um, I haven't done anything as far as changing any of the outside at all, other than getting this dropped my mailbox a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm here um, to try to uh, um, not have to change anything. I bought the house, knowing what what it was at, what it looked like. Um, aesthetically, um, the western red cedar um, does look appropriate in my eyes. Um, it hasn't um, weathered enough to change what would be all gray. Um, I think there's some concern about the entry door to the garage. Um, I have walked around the neighborhood, uh, met a few neighbors. Um, there are some other um, homes that have plywood over their entryways with shed handles going into the garage, so I'm not sure what is appropriate for the um, uh, neighborhood. Um, to me, that door seems to be uh, fairly new. It's got the um, black handles or the black um, hinges on them um, to uh, make it fit into the what it would seem to be the uh, age of the house. Um, um, the purchase price of the house I just, that I just purchased was more than any other house in the neighborhood. So I know that my house helps the value of my neighbors, um, essentially. So I'm just, I'm at a loss. So I'm here to get your help to uh, move forward. It is, I agree, it's kind of a strange situation, but um when you look at the photograph that Angela has up right now, mm -hmm. we have a very clear idea of what the garage looked like before. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, my interpretation of the situation is that the other owner went forward without a certificate of appropriateness and changed the garage to the existing configuration without permission. So I, I understand that. That's how I, I, that's why I'm here. Right. So. If they would have, I mean, my opinion would be that it, it's not, that we would have not, I would have, would not have approved or, or um, wanted to approve this change. We would have asked him to go back and if he wanted to update it or if it had some kind of maintenance issues, we would have asked for it to look like it did before. Okay. So that's kind of where I think maybe we are. I know that um, there are on barns there are a, there's a couple doors that are like mine that have the cedar right, on, but, on but them. You're, I mean, I think the issue here is we have a photograph in front of us, so we know what it looked like, 
and that's what we would have used for this specific project to Understood. approve any changes or alterations. Understood. So we're not really looking at other properties in the neighborhood because we have a picture of, of what it looked like. Um, the owner that I purchased the house from, he purchased it that way as well, which is on his application. So I'm the third owner from whoever originally did the repairs three or four years ago. Do we have a date, Angela, on the picture with the garage? 2003. 2003. So this goes back two or three owners, not just yes, to sir. the person you purchased from. Yes, sir. So you, you weren't made aware of any other certificate? Nothing was disclosed to me. Mm -mm. Katie, was this was something like this a result of people mm -hmm. turning it in? Of it being yes, I'm turned into so. code and this was turned into the um, through code enforcement. Greg, oh, it looks like. <laughs> Two owners. The uh, the owner prior to the gentleman he purchased it off of made extensive changes, widened the driveway. Uh, there was even some questions about this addition that you see the white over here. But it, um, some of the aerial photos, almost best I could document, was pretty close to when the nomination photos were taken. So that was taken off of the list of, uh, of violations. The facade on the garage, like the wood paneling, is something that he said that they just put on there. But the driveway was the, one of the main ones. And then I think there's like a canopy in the front, and painting steps, a few minor things. What is that white building? What, what is that, an addition to the house? Yes. Yeah. It's an addition to the back of the, the main structure. And there's, if we, I don't know if we have a photo from the other side. There's um, uh, a stone. And this side here, was just, it was just something plastered over like stucco. I haven't been out there in a, in a while. And it, but it was added. We, like I said, we used this, the aerial photos. And the farthest one back I could find showed it there. It's not original to the house, but it, I, I took it off the list because there was discrepancy. Most likely it dated before the nomination, so it would, it would be allowed. And then, the, like I said, the, the gentleman, he was a, uh, uh, like a handyman, and he did all kinds of stuff. Like he put this wood on the front of the garage. He widened the driveway from you know, structure to structure across property lines. First, the first violation I got was something about the color of the concrete. Then I go out there and look at it. I seen that the driveway was extensively wider. And then, you know, in for further research, we found a few more things. And there's only one one window on the other side. But so, Greg, if you if you feel comfortable with the addition was prior to the district being added. I do. Uh, what do you what do you think about the concrete? Um, I mean, that's same time, or do you think it was? No, no, that's that concrete was done uh, just a few years. Um, I would say less than ten years ago. What is that? What, what? Since we can't, we we don't have a photograph of the sides of the garage. Are the sides of the garage the same as they used to be? They're got the original clapper. Our siding, wood siding on the sides and the rear of the garage? On the rear, yes. So it's just the front? Yes, ma'am. So where there's grass sure. is now we've got concrete back there, right? There's, yeah. there's, for sure. Yes. What did you say? I'm sorry, Miss. I missed, what did you say? Just one thing. Now I noticed after seeing this grass that there's a lot more concrete right. in the back. And the driveway might be a little wider. Right. It extends all the way to the house. Yeah. Right. To the adjoining house, right? Right. Right. My neighbor it, um, is aware of it and has approved it, from what I understand. Um, so that's your neighbor's that's, gate in the photo there on the far right yes, up against Yes, the sir. Desk? Okay. That your gate on the left. Do you know the height of the gate? The far, the far right is the gate he's referring to. There's a gate from my side, the far right. That's the neighbor's backyard. Right. Mm -hmm. What about the curved? Curved gate goes into my backyard. It goes in. Yes, ma'am. 
I think this puts us in a tough position always. Um, mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that you didn't know about this when you purchased it, but there are a number of guidelines that we, we determine whether something is appropriate or not, and there are several that say we would not be able to approve the work that's been done on this garage. Um, so it's my opinion that we could continue it. Maybe you can work with staff to see what an alternative, um, but I, I, I would not be able to approve this application as it stands. And it seems the house to the right, with all of that was, they could be in violation for putting concrete on their property, correct? Yes. So do you think it's, is it a matter of, for the garage itself, is it a matter of, of paint? Is it the exposed wood or is it the style of the door or <clears throat> any I, feedback? For me it would be um, that the siding needs to match the original siding, which could be the siding that's at the top, which been, yep. if that is the original. Are you talking about the siding that's not on the door? The siding, uh, the siding just on the, not the doors, but just the siding on the building. The red. If, if the red is the original and has just been is. painted red, um, we don't regulate paint colors, but <clears throat> uh, the rest of it that's been either covered over or removed and replaced needs to match the original. Um, the door needs to be, um, if you, I think that we could, when we approve the door in the single car, yeah. the change from the double to the single door, but the garage door and the pedestrian door would have to be changed to meet the guidelines. So we would be recommending that the single door be similar to the door that's in the original 2003 photo, and I'm not really sure what our guidelines are on the pedestrian door. It would have to be... The guidelines for garages and garage doors indicate in the uh, introduction that doors should be painted to match the garages right. or to complement the garages. And staff is somewhat curious as to whether or not we believe that painting the unpainted elements no, of the structure. I don't believe that we should, I know. I think the unpainted material does not match the original and should be removed and replaced with wood siding to match the original. I don't know. So not just painting. Painting the unpainted wood would not is not what I'm trying to describe. It would be removing the cedar that does not match the original siding that goes from the top of the doors to the floor, to the bottom, with siding that matches the red and <clears throat> and then replacing the pedestrian door with one that has lights in the upper portion. It's a wood door. Is that what you're saying, Katie? For the garage the door? door. The, um, you know, the, the 2003 photo doesn't show a pedestrian Does. door at all. Um, I think we would want a more, yeah, typical, traditional looking pedestrian door, but generally on garages, um, pedestrian doors were a little more flexible with the, the design of those as long as it's just kind of appropriate to the style of the garage. So you could work with staff on that, but <clears throat> that would be, I think, Commissioner, we're both in agreement on those would be the changes that we would put in to be, a, that, that you could get approval for. Okay. Uh, so Don't you think from the original um, 2003 that it was just a one, it was, right. but and it I mean, didn't have a pedestrian door at all, so I wouldn't be. I mean, in this case, I don't, since it's already been changed and we have, it's kind of a unique circumstance. We've had not really clear who did what, but now that it's, I mean, I don't, if it was, if we were going from a single to a double maybe, but since we're going to a single and we like to approve single doors, I don't really see that a single door could be, would be in my opinion, would Is be. There a, a double door? Is there another man door to this garage? In the back. It's a single door. I don't know if there I mean, was. I understand what you're. She's suggesting that perhaps if the original door was a double door, that we would go back to that. Right. But uh, we also but have I don't, like it, single doors. That's it, a more right. appropriate scale. At, right. It, I, it could have, in my opinion, it could have been either. It's hard to say. Like you yeah. say, it has a single door, but there's more. 
single doors or two single doors or the barn kind of doors than 1928 double garage doors. That would be unusual. So I, I'm going to believe that probably the, the green door was a replacement at some point in time. There might have been two little single doors and they put a double door. It's just based on other garages in the neighborhood and trying to resolve this problem to the, you know, it's kind of a unfortunate situation. So if that, if the door that we see in that photo is possibly not the original door, then... But it is an approvable door on the design. Door. But also, you a know... A dozen separate. years ago. But We're talking 12 years ago. 12 years ago. Uh-huh. So we don't know when that door was changed. Right. No, I agree. We don't know which, no, which one, the wood one or the green one? The wood one? Yes. Yeah, we don't know. Well, no, I think Greg made that clear. Greg, yes. could you come up and talk? Our question is, are you confident that the current situation on the front of the garage was done after the district? Yes. Yes, okay. And, and, and from my knowledge, the wood from the other picture, that brown wood, the red is the original, and the brown is just, it's just a facade. It's just something they put on the front. I think, okay. it, I think it could just be taken off and expose what was there. Oh, okay. I think that's what... You know, the, from our investigation, what the well, maybe they me. did that because they changed. You know, they had to make some kind of structural change to put in the door, the other door. So they thought, well, they just kind some of, I old westerny. I guess I'm just that. adding. I'm offering a right. my my motion would offer a you know the uh, the special consideration to go ahead and use the openings that have been made, but to return it. To but I like the garage similar. the way it is. But I like the garage the way it is. That, that's what I'm suggesting is that we leave the door openings as is, but the but the doors would be replaced with doors that fit our guidelines for the neighborhood. I don't have the money for that. I just bought this house, so we we understand your situation, but no. we have to give you a we have to uh, we have to. Um, go forward with some kind of certificate of appropriateness or deny it. If we deny it, then you're in violation. We can, um, at this point, we could continue to the December 2nd meeting, and that would give you time to work with staff, figure out if there are any other alternatives that we can come up with that um, will meet your needs, allow sure. you to, you know, make changes to the garage, or, you know, if, if painting is something that works out. Um, but that would give you some more time to figure out what our, our options are. Okay. It's unfortunate because probably there was some knowledge that this was, and Greg's nodding, that the owner had, that the past owner had knowledge that this was not. And a citation. And a citation. So really it was not revealed to you. It's not. And so he's saying that the past owner did know. And if he didn't disclose was, it to you at closing, then it's, it's a civil matter between you and him now. I can't write a ticket to him because he wouldn't be able to go on the, your property to right. make changes to relieve it. No, I understood. I probably have to get an attorney, I'm guessing. So, what, what about a violation for this concrete to the right or whatever direction? Well, uh, as of right now, there, there's nothing. I don't have a, 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 a I wrote a citation and that kept, closed the case. Now he sold it. I don't have a current one. He has not been posted, to my knowledge, with a current uh, notice of violation. And since he's obviously trying to remedy the situation, I do not have a, a need to do so. Um, the concrete, uh, you know, if y'all all allow it, then I won't have to put it on there. But <laughs> there, there was some question about the color of the concrete. Is it, do, do I need well, to make the, it darker? Well, the guidelines state it has to be a, a, have medium gray tones or match adjacent. And when they poured the concrete, they did. You cannot paint or stain the concrete. The dye has to be put into the concrete when it's poured. Uh, there's a question of the width. He extended it beyond what is, uh, what is permissible, and they didn't add the color all the way up to the front porch. And also the neighbor, in allowing them to do that, has also become, He's it's also become a situation for the neighbor could also right. be cited for allowing the concrete to be poured on his side of the property line. With the, with the age of the concrete? Um, it's, it's at their discretion. Um, some of it, it changes color with age, and we've had 
um, previous cases that have had concrete that was old that we just we didn't uh, enforce it. Something new, I'd had to would have to write a citation right. for. But um, if they say that it matches close enough to the color, okay. Mr. Johnson, would you like to continue this? I oh, know, Mr. Johnson. Oh, Mr. I'm Pelkey. sorry. I'm sorry. You're I purchased it from Mr. Johnson. Oh, I see. So I'm here, I guess, on his behalf because now I, I now own it. I can see that he, he brought this to you three days before we closed. So. See, if yeah, staff, if staff is working with this gentleman, the new owner, right. I don't think it's fair to him if co the concrete becomes an issue because most a lot of this is not on his property. So the citation would be this house to the right. left and right. Work. I'd have to notify both property owners. I'm just saying if he has a problem, but, I think the house to the right has a problem. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Right. But, yeah, there's there was both, a, of both of them. But for right now, I would like to make a motion to continue um, HPCA 15-001-10 to the December 2nd meeting. Second. second. All right, I have a motion and a second. And before we vote, just for the record, Mr. Pelkey, could you officially, for our legal staff, state your name and the fact that you're the owner, of the, your full name and the fact that you're the owner of the property? Hey, I'm Donald Pelkey, and I'm the owner of the property at 2137 Northwest 26th Street. <coughs> Effective 724-15. Sufficient? Very good. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right, I have a motion from Mary Jo Meacham and a second from uh, Jennifer Bourne to continue that item. All in favor, uh, that case, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. That is continued. HPCA 15 00126 at 540 Northwest 41st Street, Crown Heights, Ward 2. Consideration and possible action on application of Kelly Cordray and Robert Heliger for a certificate of appropriateness to one, demolish garage elective, two, construct garage elective, and three, add additional paving and mechanical equipment elective. I'm Roger Heiliger. I'm at 540 Northwest 41st. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. So, staff had recommended approval on item one and continuing item numbers two and three. Um, any initial comments or questions from the commission? Want to talk about the demolition? I do have some comments on the size of the garage. It's my understanding that the guidelines indicate or allow either uh, to replace the garage on the existing pad or a similar size, I guess. We've allowed a little leeway sometimes, or the 450 square feet. So yours was 600, and your existing garage is 600? Yes, yes 3,600 square foot. And your proposed garage is 680? It's, uh, yes. That well, that's what's stated in the okay. proposal. <clears throat> so I guess my first <clears throat> concern would be that it, it would seem like that we could allow for 600, but we couldn't go over that 600. We couldn't allow for the footprint to be larger than the existing footprint. The proposed footprint is 857. Oh, it's 857. Yeah. What's the original? Six, 600. Oh, 600. Oh, so okay. I go from 600 to 857. Oh, to 857. I'm sorry. Yeah. I knew it was more. I didn't realize it was that. Because it was both 25% more. Actually, the, the existing is about 25% more than what we generally allow, which doesn't really have anything to do with this. but. Um, but it's original structure. It has never been touched. Right. So we can't, we don't allow, we generally, the guidelines don't allow for a, a larger building, a larger garage to be built. In generality. I'm sorry. Generally. But, like, no. Well, I'm just, you know. 450, if you were building a new garage, you, it would have to be 450 square feet unless you could provide information showing that the original garage was larger than that. And, and it, it, is. it is. Is that correct? Yeah. And it is. It, it is. 600. Right. So you could do it till 600. You could, you could well, build it as 600 well. is not going to fit our needs. I okay. Mean, well, I, my, my vehicle will not fit in that garage as it is. Uh, and the right-hand side of the garage is completely useless. Even if we built it back exactly like it is, a vehicle cannot get in the right-hand side of that garage. <laughs> We, we and we have two vehicles. Right. And we understand that there's nothing in the guidelines that allow us to make an exception for the size of 
the vehicle. And I think the proportions of the garage, it doesn't have to be the exact rectangle that it is today. It could be a little wider, but the total square footage would not exceed 600 square, the total footprint would not exceed 600 square feet. But the commission has okayed garages larger than 600 square foot. Depending on the case. Excuse me? Depending on the particular circumstances of the case, yes. Well, I mean, there's one in construction right now that my vehicle would fit in. But, uh, I mean, I'm not asking for anything I don't think unreasonable. I have destroyed two vehicles from storms coming through that's been hailed on. That even if I built that same garage, my, my vehicle won't fit in it. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm I mean within the last, I don't really remember when we changed the guidelines. It's been within the last two and a half years. I mean, I'm talking about protecting my property. Right. I mean, we understand. I, I mean, I'm losing we vehicles understand. because we understand. Well, because I cannot. We can only, we can only, we can only give um, certificates based on the guidelines that we have in front of us. But you have okayed larger garages on larger footprints. And the commission has, you know, look, I don't know. I mean, I, I can run a fifth let me just, let me just state at 4444, it states that historical districts predominantly are detached and attached garage are appropriate unless documentation demonstrates that previous historic existence of the property. There's a house right down the street from me that has an attached garage that had a detached garage. Right. So it had been okayed through the commission. And I'm not asking for anything unfair. It's, it, it matches our house. The colonial revival is going to be complements what we have, and it's useful. And, and we do the two car shuffle every day, and we don't feel it's appropriate to park on the street like all, everybody else does. And I'm, if you've ever walked down our street or walked down a lot of the streets out there, it's a beautiful neighborhood. It's a great place right. to be, but not everybody yields to pedestrians. It's almost like the running of the bulls. You see, ladies trying to get right. the kids in between cars and right. we, we, we I, th I think we're very sympathetic to that situation but I, I just have to say that when we give our reason for a, you know for approving something we have to use the guidelines okay well you have one that's under construction at this point that I mean right now right now you're ahead of most people because you you have proof that you have 600 square feet Whereas if you didn't have a garage and you didn't have proof, we would be only letting you. But if they had an attached garage to their house, they can build any size garage they want. No. Four hundred square feet. It's not four hundred square foot. It's seven hundred something square foot. Plus it has a two. It's two car. It's two story. I'm not asking for a two story garage. We have. I have. Good. I have an existing living quarters on the back of the this, garage and we want to like, keep that right we want to stay with the historical preservation in the, in the past when we've had questions like this and the owners feel like that you know you do have proof and other you know situations in the neighborhood we've asked people just to go back and you know provide us with that information and work with staff maybe they need to I, mean, I have pictures cases. right now with me if you'd like to see them i think that you know in the past we've accepted you know a you know you know uh, specific research listing addresses in your neighborhood and people have gone up and down the street they've estimated they've turned in um, I mean this isn't an estimate I've actually went over there right. myself but I, I mean we, we've, we've required that be a detailed written report from the owner for us to look at and for staff to give an opinion that yes that is true I mean I don't right now you're I mean, saying that somebody else has gotten approval recently and I'm and we would just need to see that. Well, I, I, I we, agree, Ms. Mitchell, but I mean, is it, is it unreasonable for me to have a home that I can protect my property? I mean, so, is that unreasonable no, for it's me not, to have that? That is not unreasonable. However, in historic districts, we have guidelines, and we have to give approval based on those guidelines. I mean, we're legally responsible for following the guidelines. The commission we can't just has gone outside the guidelines before. We can't, I'm sorry? This the commission has gone outside the guidelines. This isn't a unique circumstance, though. Excuse me? This isn't a unique circumstance, though. This is a unique circumstance. Why do you not? That? This is not a unique circumstance. We're giving you the footprint of your existing garage that is actually over 450 square feet. So you're getting more than usually. So that is us making an exception. But it's already 600 square foot. 
And, and I think I think that what you learned is that we would allow it will not fit we would what have, I have. I don't right, understand. We would allow for a different configuration if you stayed to the 600. That would but be not over a unique circumstance for the design to be somewhat different than your original design. So that if you could work with the 600 to get the width that you need, that would be the the the, the uh, variation to the guideline that we would allow, instead of making you go back to the exact same okay. size. It, it, it well, I mean, I understand, but, but even the 600 square foot, the way it's designed, I'm not going to get my vehicle in it. But it appears the garage in your design is 600 square feet, in your new design is 600 square feet. What well, puts it over the edge No, my new, my new garage is only, uh, yeah, the new garage would be 600 square foot itself. Yes. Right. With, with the distance that I have, the 24 by 25, right. correct? Yeah. yeah. That's 600 but I wouldn't have my living quarters, which is historically correct, and we want to keep that. I mean, why would we want to destroy the historical presence of our home that has that already attached to it? I mean, we'd have to destroy that. We'd have to get rid of something that is unique to our home and unique to our neighborhood. That's, that's all we're asking to do is have a garage that we can use and keep it historically correct with the living quarters on the back. I mean, from, from the street, you're not going to be able to even see the addition at all. I mean, if you want to take a picture, if you want, I mean, I've got a picture in the front of my house. I think you have pictures down the driveway that you cannot even see the add-on, like that picture right there. You would never see the addition to our house. You'd never see it to the right, you'd never see it to the back. Katie, would there be additional material that the owner could bring that would... So if there are, um, other, if there are other houses that have larger garages, um, staff is happy to um, work with you on identifying those addresses and evaluating if and when those were <clears throat> approved by the commission. There may be some that were approved under previous sets of guidelines that didn't have the specific requirements for the square footage, or it may be that we do discover that there are many other larger garages surrounding you that would justify um, a larger garage. But we can't make that decision based just on um, a statement in the meeting that somebody else has a bigger garage. We would need to evaluate if it was approved, when it was approved, what the circumstances were that warranted approving those larger garages. Um, I mean, I don't know. Would you like you, for us to continue with this so that you could work with staff? Well, I think that would be the only way to do it. Yeah, okay. I'd agree. we do that. And, and so who do I contact? Do I contact Ms. Yetter or? You've been, I think you've been working with Angela. Yeah. Okay. So contact her and yeah. give her the. So you, she, she would know what your brand is? Yeah. I, I, and Angela's worked with people to. to I mean, she's been great with us. Many she, times. She's been great with us. I mean, she's gave us. We agree. We love Angela. To take care of us. That's a great job. Yeah, good. <laughs> so I mean, I just wanted to come up here and. and yes, I, I think Angela can. You know, she, so so work with you and and get, get the additional information to us that we can do another evaluation in December. I move to continue HPCA, fifteen zero zero one two six to the December second meeting. Second. A motion to continue from Mary Jo Meacham. Second from Jennifer Bourne. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, continue that case to December. Katie, could you uh, just interpret for me the guidelines? If someone has a two-car garage with quarters and it's in terrible shape, they want to demolish it and build another one, could it, does it have to go on? Could it go on the same footprint and maybe be a three-car garage, but it's the same footprint? Uh, yes, we've, we've generally... The limitation has been on the size itself, but if people want the garage to be reconfigured into a different setup, um, I think the commission has generally been accommodating of that. Just wanted to clear. So, if they didn't want the garage, uh, the quarters part, then it could be more garage, right? Because it was there, it had right. a footprint. Yep. Thank you. HPCA 15 0129 at 225 Northwest 24th Street, Jefferson Park, Ward 2. Consideration and possible action on application by Adam Rayan of Falcon Realty LLC for certificate of appropriateness to 1. Install TPO at primary structure and overlap parapet edge required. 2. Replace metal roof at accessory structure required. 3. Paint wood trim required. And 4. Paint slope assist at accessory structure roof required. 
Thank you. And staff has recommended continuing items one and two. And was there was there a recommendation on items three and four? Did I just overlook it? Three and four are not required. Oh, that's what it was. For approval. For, because they're right. Okay. All right. Any initial questions or comments from the commission on this? Hi, welcome. Good afternoon. Adam Ryan, Falcon Realty. You are the? I'm the representative of Falcon Realty. Okay. My name is Adam Ryan. Very good. Thank you. I think, Mr. Ryan, the issue is that the repairs did not match what was there prior to. Actually, for the fund. Actually, for the front building, it used to be tar, hot tar. I'm sorry? For the front building roof, it used to be a hot tar. Before we go change it to a TPO with precisely specific, with the licensed contractor about if it needs any permits or any kind of paperwork to be done, because this is a historical neighborhood, he told me that he did a lot of roof, if which is true, and I have seen it. The same location, the same roof, and I have a contract with him that right. he is licensed roofer and he is quite responsible about all permits and paperwork to get right. this work done professionally. Right. Apparently in this situation he should have gone a little further perhaps and since it was in a historic district, uh, can we talk about just one roof at a time? Can we talk Absolutely. about the main building first? Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Can you see that um, my concern would be that I, I tried to do a little research and maybe Jeff you know more about this than I do. Go ahead. Uh, about this type of a roof. I mean, I, I looked up some information, and I'm, I'm not an expert, and I've never worked on this kind of project, but it, it, it appeared to me that, that this type, TPO, can be installed without wrapping it around and over the top of the parapet and attaching it to the front facade. That does not appear to be the standard way that this particular roof is installed. Okay. That's okay. exactly right. Um, let, let me there show. are a number of ways to, to do the top uh, with a termination bar or tucking it under the parapet. There are a number of different ways to do it. Uh, it's not appropriate to wrap it over the top where you can see it from the street and cover up no. that historic uh, parapet. Okay. No. Actually, it, it is like a sheet. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. We understand, but it's, yeah. it is not, I mean, from my research, which is limited, it led me to believe that that is not a standard manner to install that type of roof by pulling it over and I'm not really sure how they attached it to the front. I, it would be very difficult, I think, to get some kind of decent seal when you pull it around and attach it to 85-year-old masonry. Plus, we can see it now, which does impact the original material, and we cannot have that. That would not be approved. Okay, away from the, the same contractor did many uh, properties in the same location with the same way and they have some pictures for it. And they the, wrapped it around the top like that? Yes. In the historic district? Excuse me? In one of the historic districts? Yes, in uh, Robinson Street and 28th, Northwest 28th and Robinson. Okay. Yeah, and they have pictures well, for it. We may have other people and come in and discuss That's this with us. Absolutely. Would you like to see it? <laughs> <laughs> I have it with me. It, that doesn't really, sir, it doesn't matter how many times it's been done. We okay. We're just discussing yours, right. and apparently, uh, I don't know how, why you're here before us. By the way, I, I am here to do what you see yes. right. Yes, Not We're good. arguing or objecting about I whatever. Know. We're happy to have you here. Appreciate yeah. that. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, this is the, the contract he, a licensed roofer, right. and he said that he did it many times, and sure, he was, right? right. He should have been here, by the way, today. But he just told me that his daughter has her race national indicator Texas this morning. Uh -huh. That's why he had to go with her. And I have right. the text message. Would you like to continue this and have him come back and talk to us again? Absolutely, if you welcome that. Would that be better? Absolutely. Was he responsible for the other roof? No. The other oh. roof, actually, it used to be a metal roof, very old metal. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, let me bring you a piece of it. Yes, we have a picture.
that what we used to have in there. Uh -huh. At least it's like 50, 60 years old. Right, that would, that would, that would make it a historic material. Absolutely, yes. Right, <laughs> and therefore that's the problem here, is very, that we prefer, that's, that's the catch here. We, we prefer the historic material. Right? Historical. Well, when we need to replace material that's historic, we like to replace it with something that's similar. Tell you the truth. I could not make, similar. I could put some rust on it and make some holes. It will but, look the same. We don't. We understand that it was we didn't maybe it, nothing. We understand that maybe it needed to be replaced. But I, I'm going to suggest that I, I feel like that 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 replacement is not uh, close enough to the original material. It, it was there for I, I could tell at least 70 years old. Right. We change it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't like, you know, to upgrade or to do, we, we, we got scared if you put TPO on there, it might not fit because it was this kind of metal. Like you said, this might be the code to be historical. That's why we put exactly the same, the same way, being removed, the same way, being replaced. We didn't change nothing. Angela, do we have photographs of before on this particular roof? Or do we just have... Well, and as a flat roof, it's kind of hard to... <laughs> I mean, the, anyway. I, I'm not, it's hard to see because we don't have a before photo unless you could provide that to us. But and it doesn't, even though it might be old, it does not appear that that was actually the original um, manner in which they installed the roof. Which then kind of you get into another subject of when you start taking off material that was not original, even though it was old, How do I then know we have to go back original. to the original way. So. We're just having Don't a problem. How it looks is not original? For 60 years, not original? I, I, I know sometimes our, the guidelines seem a little unusual, but you could, have, you could have maintained this roof and fixed it and kept it. But once you took it off, that's where we have an issue. It, Angela, did we have photos absolutely. of the before? We do not have photographs. Do you have photographs of the roof before you put the brown on? Sorry for that. Any it other looks people have historical, but spots. actually this is trash. Yeah, I, I kept some of it. I, have, I still That's have some correct. of it. And I give Miss Angela even one. But it was hold. Mm -hmm. You have holes in there, and it started leaking. And they have pictures for the right. ceiling inside how it looks like. We have very, we have, we, we've been very, very, very precise about getting about the same exactly thing. We were definite that this roof at least was there for 60, 70 years, <clears throat> without any. Objection. I, so we thought that, okay, we have to do it exactly the same, but a newer one. I, so we didn't go anywhere. This is about I, this roof. But I don't know what you recommend. I, I would recommend that you work with staff on that one too, but um, I, I, would, I would be open to giving you a continuance so that you could bring your uh, roofing contractor back and maybe we could discuss the application of the larger roof and maybe some ways that he could... No make changes so that it would be acceptable. Absolutely, we'll let him here. And about this, this historical that one, I'm building, it, uh, yeah. this is the material we put, and this is the material it was there for over than 60, 70 years at least, at least. <laughs> one, of staff, one of staff's findings was that the, the historically the roof was not metal. Um, and therefore it's not appropriate material. What would it have so, been right. historically? Right. Once you take the once you took the metal roof off and and revealed what the original roof was, then it should have been repaired like it was built the first time. You're absolutely right, but when you see something at least sixty, seventy years. Yes. Yeah, but not... And the former owner, he doesn't even disclose that. He got a citation for that. It has been there like this, and there were no objections at all. So we thought that we are beautifying things, not make it ugly. Right. And we put this kind Maybe of... You could find it, right. Right. Maybe you could find it, right. Especially, by the way, sorry for interruption. This building is like seven, eight foot high, so it is not seen from the street. It doesn't right. even face the street. It is really hard to see the roof. That's why... We didn't even recognize how it looks like as a piece of rust when we got it. Right. But Angela, did you have you, something I, to I don't know what to, what to say. 
but we don't feel that we did anything wrong. I know. All photographs taken for this PowerPoint presentation were taken from the street. I did not enter the property to take any of these photographs. They were either taken from the front or from the side street. And what, is, what are we looking at right This is the secondary <coughs> structure on the other side. Is it the back where the, like the back side so there's not tile on it? Is it tiled on three sides and, and this is the back? On the mansard type roof, the parapet, yes, three sides. Um, the Sanborn maps indicate that both the primary structure and the secondary structure had flat composition roofs of some sort. So I'm assuming tar down or something like right. that. Right. Um, along with the tile, non-combustible roofing material is also historic based on the Sanborn maps. It is presumed based on the Sanborn maps that the existing metal roof and this structure that sits on the roof are non-historic. Because they are incompatible materials, we presume that they have not gained any historic significance since their installation. As long as these materials have not been touched or removed for the from the structure, they can, in fact, continue to exist on the structure and be repaired in kind at less than 50% per side. However, once the material is removed, it is presumed to be non-contributing, inappropriate material that should be replaced back to its original condition or with a material that would be considered compatible and consistent with the historic condition. Thank you. I think what Angela is saying, if, if it was a flat roof in the first place, that we wouldn't, the metal wouldn't be a part of it and that we could not see it from the street. But I would uh, like to go ahead and move to continue HPCA 15.00129 to the December 2nd meeting and give you and your contractor some time to take a look at maybe some possibilities of changing the way he attached it to the parapet. You could present that. Don't do anything until you present it to the back to us again. And then maybe you can get with Angela and discuss the second structure with the metal roof. Absolutely. Any other recommendations? Second. Should, should I bring this? Back again with me next visit. <laughs> you may if you want to. So I have a motion from Joe Meacham, second from the Lord Frank Clements, right? Uh, to continue, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank you. That case is continued. As a note, there was probably a metal coping on that. That's typically what you do for a TBO roof. Is that on the that. roof? On, on the one that we just looked The big at. one or the little one? Anytime you okay. have. The yeah, there has to there be would a be flash, a metal, mean, or cope so something metal coping there. that goes over the top of it. So it looks like to me that it's just missing. Well, but it it would, be missing. that would then cover up an historic feature of right. the property. On the Correct. parapet, I mean, uh, a lot of times it doesn't come over that top no. down. It's no. down lower somewhere. But somehow, somewhere. and yes. again, I don't know, I, I hope he has original pictures because somehow some metal was showing right somewhere. Right, Unless had, it, because it goes up and then, yes, right. All right, great. We'll move on to our next case. HPCA 15-00132 at 819 Northwest 18th Street, Mesta Park, Ward 6. Consideration and possible action on application of Matthew and Robin Warren for certificate of appropriateness to one, demolish garage elective, two, construct garage elective, and three, replace portion of driveway elective. Thank you. And I think we had, a uh, staff had recommended approval, uh, if I remember, all items on this one. Yeah, staff had recommended approval with a uh, condition and then uh, approve item one. And I believe we had comments from the neighborhood on this one, is that right? Are you Mr. Warren? I am Matt Warren, 819 Northwest 18th. I'm just curious about the tree. Um, can you tell me, are you salvaging that tree? Uh, the tree will stay. So where exactly will the garage sit so that it's not going to be so, in competition with the what, tree or the tree roots? Well, uh, the plan is, is I'm going to uh, move the, the left wall, maybe the west wall, <laughs> over a foot. And then to keep the doors, that middle part will shrink a foot. <coughs> And at the same time, raise it up to help with the uh, flooding issue. And you think that'll, you won't have problems with the tree 
in five years or ten years? <laughs> Just curious. It, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but, as, as big as it is, I, I would hope it wouldn't grow much bigger. Than that. <laughs> the neighborhood had a concern on maybe moving it further. Do you feel comfortable that a foot is, a foot's probably all you can get? And keep the doors correct. Okay. But basically, you're just rebuilding the garage with the existing materials. Yes, ma'am. There's really uh, nothing wrong with the siding or anything. I move to approve HBCA 150132, um, how do you say it, based on staff's, on the staff's recommendations. Staff had recommended a uh, condition on. I'm sorry, with the condition of. That the pedestrian door would be a wood door rather than a steel door? Are, are you okay oh, with that? Oh, right. <clears throat> if that's what's approved, that's fine. All right. With the condition that the pedestrian door will be wood rather than steel. Katie, do you have a cut sheet of the wood pedestrian door, or do you need that from? I think we'll need that to be submitted to include in the CA. Okay, to be submitted to staff prior to okay. issuing the CA. Just the CA will go out in 10 days, so just prior to that, we'll need you to send us just a cut sheet for a door. Okay. I second that motion. I have a motion from uh, Joe Meacham, second from Neela Crank Clements to approve with condition. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. That's approved. Thank you. HPCA 15 00135 at 214 Northwest 17th Street, Heritage Hills, Ward 6. Consideration of possible action on application of Gene Morgan by Joe of Stone Ridge Construction, LLC, for a certificate of appropriateness to one demolished garage required and two, construct garage and outdoor kitchen elective. Original burned in fire. So the, the um, historic garage is, has been removed already. It had a very significant fire, and you've got pictures of that in your staff report, but we need to follow through and approve the removal of the debris, yeah. basically. Um, and then they have a proposal to reconstruct a fairly similar garage to what was there previously. So staff had recommended approval on the item one and then continuing item number two. I move to approve okay. item number one of HPCA 15-00135. Second. I have a motion uh, to approve item number one from Jennifer Bourne, a second from Heather Clemmer. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, item one is approved. Let's talk about the new uh, garage and kitchen. Hi. Hi, Welcome. how are you doing? You are? I'm Joe Kraft with Stone Ridge Construction. Looks like we're running into the same issue on this that we did a few cases ago where the proposed replacement garage is much larger than what our guidelines allow. Um, I think that's one reason staff is recommending continuance to give you time to see if you can. It's actually not larger. It's built on the exact same pad. We didn't replace the pad, the concrete pad. The pad is 19 by 19. And the covered area in the back was covered by uh, a shed roof before we, before we roughed in our construction. And by the way, it's in a condition where it can all be inspected. We haven't covered anything up. Uh, Mr. Mangrum, the owner, has a, uh, a convertible, and he wished to be able to get his vehicle under a structure in the event of a storm. So we have the, the structure simply wrapped with house wrap and the roof is covered with a synthetic waterproof felt that can be removed for nailing inspection and the house wrap can be removed for sheathing inspection. So we've done nothing except get his, his vehicles covered. Uh, so the, what you're looking at there is exactly the same size that it was before, which is approximately 370 feet of garage because the slab is 19 by 19 foot 6, which works out to about 370 square feet. The back area was covered before, like I mentioned, with a shed roof, and we just continued the architecture back for a, a better looking uh, backyard area. Um, to the left of the garage there is, their, is their swimming pool, and that whole back area is like an entertainment center. So we, in, in my opinion, we've greatly improved the appearance without violating any of the requirements. 
Do you have an existing site plan of where the garage was before and then where the new that, one is going to be? That should, that should be in your information. I don't have it in my hands here, but that was submitted. Yeah, existing site plan. Does there was a plot plan and a site plan. I don't know where it is in, your, in the packet. Staff was, was the uh, page, uh, page five of 26 of your staff report has a site plan. Let me see if that's, um, that's, a, that's new. I just wanted to see where the old one was, unless uh, I am missing something. I see existing concrete pavers, but uh, maybe I need glasses. I don't know. <laughs> Katie, <clears throat> you, as part of the packet, you have a picture of the old outdoor kitchen, and it was stand. Or is that new? No, it's what the is old this one. from? That is what was, that's the old one that burned. Right. Okay. Where, where is that in the plan? I, I'm sorry, I don't, in the plot plan that you have it named plot plan? If you're looking at your site plan, the only site plan in the packet includes both the previous, previously existing structure and the proposed structure. The dotted square okay. is the original size. Thank you. You're welcome. I think that in the past we've we've looked at. Um, so are you? Well, let me ask. You, so are you saying that the portion that you of the roof, the new roof, you, you, you wanted to just go ahead and extend that over the pad that was already there for the kitchen that burned down? Exactly right. And there's a difference, I think, here with the garage. And then was that approved, Katie? The the existing kitchen? As far as we can tell, the kitchen addition on the back was never approved or permitted. You mean the original one? Okay, well, they, it was it was some cabinetry with tile on it. Um, it had a roof, roof, and we approved. When it has a roof, we it, ha it would have to have been. And to pour the additional concrete, that would have come into, uh, yeah. you know, have, getting a permit. Well, so basically, I, it, it appears that that the, the kitchen that burned down had never been approved. So we really can't count that extra space as extra space that you should get now. It would but, be my but, interpretation. But they did have a shed roof back there, and they what they did was, whoever did it, they just set some cabinets right. under there, tiled it, set their barbecue in it, and that was their outdoor kitchen. I mean, it, it wasn't like it had plumbing or a, a garbage disposal or any of that. You know, it was cabinetry right. with tile on it and a barbecue. And so that that structure was there, just in a, a bit of a different form. So now they want to put cabinets, right. tile, you know, redo. What they want to have what they had before, plus room right. for their lawnmower and outdoor equipment. I mean, it's my memory that we recently, within the last six months, we had another um, garage, and the owner just wanted to have like a four to six foot extension of the roof off the back, so they could have a door and put some chairs out there. We denied it because we were actually looking at the concrete on the floor and the roof, the, what the roof, what the actual roof covered. And so because that went over 450 square feet, we did not allow them to add that additional um, overhang to create a porch, to my recollection. And I think it may have worked in the applicant's favor had the owner brought a uh, a proposal before the commission to approve that outdoor kitchen and that shed roof, but I think Katie said you did not see one. No, we don't have documentation that it was, okay. we don't know exactly when it was built, but we don't have any documentation that it was approved. <clears throat> so in this situation, I'm, I'm not really sure what maybe we would have, I, I, I don't want to suggest a, something that we would approve, but um, I don't think that having the entire thing under one roof, it makes the garage, the size of the garage, over the sizes outlined in the guidelines. What, and what size is that? Uh, you can build it to the original, to the size that you have, or 450 square feet, whichever you prefer. Okay. And because that is simply functioning as an overhang, not a garage, right. can, can there not be an exception for an overhang, especially why the fact that there was one there before? I'm just saying apparently we decided no on the last one that came right. before us, to my memory. 
I think what ended up happening is they reduced the size of the garage so that they could still have that outdoor overhang. Back, overhang. Because I can see it from my house. Oh. That yeah, it was in our neighborhood. So, yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> Their garage is already undersized. 20 by 20 would be 400. They have 19 by 19, which is 360. So you so, could build up to 450. But the garage is 360. So you, what, what, what I'm understanding, some of the commissioners saying, is if the garage is 360 now, you could maybe have an overhang, overhang possibly to increase the footprint to 450. This is over 450, so it would need to yeah, be Yeah, that, that footprint is somewhere in the neighborhood of 580, and I'd have to get an exact measurement. But they had an overhang there before. And this is substantially better looking than what they had. They had it was not approved. So once it's gone, I mean, as long as it's there, I mean, whoever did it, we don't know who did it, but as long as it was there and nobody touched it, or if it fell down and you put it back up, that would be okay. But once it's down and then you do something completely different, then you're back to the guidelines. So, so what do you, are you, so, so really, it would have been best had the work not started until you got a CA. That would have been the best case scenario. Um, because that did not happen, we still have to look at the work as though it has not been done. And what would we approve if you were bringing a new application to us? Um, I do not see that the guidelines support what you have started to build there. So. Because, because their kitchen burned down and records show that no pit permit was pulled for it, they can't replace what they had. I mean, basically, it, it comes under, you know, non-original additions or material. When they're gone, then we have to go back to, you know, original. I mean, as long as it was there and it was repaired, you know, it was, it was you know, we don't really know. It was not permitted. We don't know how old it was or whatever. But now that it's gone and you've started over, then the guidelines apply to the new new design. And, and the commission has approved outdoor kitchens and things yes. in backyards before. Um, I don't recall one in this particular configuration where it appears in part of the garage. We've, a, we've, a, we've, we've approved the them when they were like next to the garage and they had like a pergola over them or it was, you know, um, so what if we uh, get the garage part of it approved so we can finish siding it and get the door up and get them back in their garage? And then we submit a set of drawings for an outdoor kitchen with a covered area attached to the garage. Could, could there be a, I hate to use the phrase back door, but could there be a back door way we get that approved if we take a different route? I, I don't think we could approve the garage with what we have now. Not unless you reduce the yeah. roof but to cover 450 square feet. I think Plus because this was all proposed as one structure, um, we don't have a way to split out separate items based on what we have in front of us right now. But I think we could continue this to a future meeting and come back with some revisions like you're talking about that would be more of a, a more standalone designed garage with something attached to the back that was more of an outdoor kitchen. We and it sounds like it might be more in keeping with what the commission's comfortable with. We were seeking to give them a better product than they had before by giving it a, con a contiguous streamlined look as opposed to a tacked on uh, kind of a podunk looking structure back there. We, we understand. <laughs> Once again, I'm just, today I have to, <laughs> I'm, I, we, we have guidelines and we just have to, you know, we just can't make exceptions. And, you know, that's always, you can see, if you've sat through some today, I mean, it seems like we have more problems when we're after the fact because it's, it doesn't allow us to negotiate with you prior to and explain, you know, and, and to allow, you know, some give and take there on what we could do once it's... So if that roof, that overhang, if it were not attached to the garage and it were a separate freestanding free roof, it has potential of being approved? A second and sensory structure? Yeah. I mean, if what if, if, what, what if you attached. took the kitchen and you put it on the back of the garage and then your overhang didn't have to be as big? 
you just had a patio. I mean, I don't know where the 450 would be, but we've, because you have leftover roof, I, I think, you're saying that you only have 19 by 19. I don't know if you have enough to cover anything. Katie, Jeff. what guidelines would they need to look at for, because that's a separate structure from the garage, and we don't have those parts of the ordinance since we were looking at this as all one garage structure. So there's a, a chapter in the guidelines on accessory structures um, that's separate from garages, and then we also look at um, landscape and landscape elements that addresses things like decks and pergolas and trellises and um, that sort of thing. Okay, so from a design standpoint, I'm just trying to think of an efficient way uh, to correct the problem. If we were to separate that structure, add two posts, and have a contiguous looking backyard setting where that was its own freestanding structure, but it was right next to the garage, does that have potential of being approved? A structure such as you're describing would have the potential for quite a bit of damage, I would presume, because there is a certain amount of space between the garage and your kitchen structure. How <coughs> you would address maintenance issues and that sort of thing are going to be difficult with two structures that are so close to each other. Staff would be happy to work with you towards figuring out a design that will work for you and your applicant, okay. but I'm not certain that we have time in this venue Fair to enough. address all of those options. So will I meet with you or who do I meet with to work yes, through please. this? Yes, please. Okay. So then basically we're at a, a wall until you and I meet and work through this. Is that right? We're at a wall. We hit a wall until you and I work through this. And the staff has also said that there's some additional details um, that they didn't have related to the garage. Um, that were in the specific findings that were listed out about the pedestrian door has not been detailed. The light fixtures have not been detailed. So even once you have the new plans for the garage, those specific elements that are in the specific findings also need to be addressed. Did you say screen door? Pedestrian. Pedestrian door. door. Okay. That's not called out in there? I thought we called that out as a uh, nine light. Uh, panel door. It's a it's a metal panel door. Do we have? A, did you include a tear sheet? Do you remember? I don't remember if I. That's what we would staff, need. Staff can in the drawing. We just have a one over. Okay. Staff can work with you on that and make sure that so, we've got those. Those shouldn't be difficult details to pull. That was to buttons Make sure up. we have the accurate information. Okay. So how do I get your information? Huh? Oh, you'll call me. Okay. So do we want to continue to November 4th? If we do, you have to get everything worked out and have it into by Tuesday. Staff by Tuesday. Next right. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. I move to continue HPCA 15-00135, item 2, to the November 4th meeting. Second. A motion from Mila Clint Clements, second from Heather Clemmer to continue the item uh, to the November meeting. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That item is continued. All right. HPCA 15 00136 at 915 Northwest 38th Street, Crown Heights, Ward 2. Consideration of possible action on application of David, Lisa, and Michael Williams for a certificate of appropriateness. To one, demolish garage elective, and two, construct new garage elective. All right. Staff had recommended approval of item one, demolish garage, and continuing item number two, construct garage. Because of some questions. Is the applicant present? Any questions or comments from the commission? Applicants not present. The applicants are medical students, and so they're going to be chronically unavailable, I think, <laughs> to some extent. <laughs> what did you say, Angela? They are unavailable. They're unavailable? Yes, ma'am. They will be chronically unavailable because they are medical students. So. Oh. Yes. Oh. So I think we're running into the same situation at the proposed replacement garage is larger than the guidelines 
will provide for. I wonder if we could continue it and ask Angela or Katie to speak with the ap applicants if they will reduce the size of the garage. And then also, I guess there are some other issues as well. There was yeah, I think any, any comments you all want us to pass along to the applicant, we'll share those um, I th for a future meeting. Be, they now have this, so they know. So, yeah, they have the staff report. The commission does not disagree with staff comments then? Is that I don't, safe to say? Yes, I'm in mm -hmm. agreement. Did these existing garage doors have any um, historic presence at all? Because I just remember another case where we made them like build it exactly like this. <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, they certainly look very old. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if we know uh, date or age or whatever. Okay. Typically, where they're the more we want it to look exactly like this, it's where they're up close to the street. Uh, when they're that far back, it's usually not so much. Right. Like so this uh, maybe I misunderstood it. It doesn't have a street presence at all. You can't see it from the street. Oh, um, you just can see it a little bit. Yeah, you can see it. That's the view looking up the driveway. It's really big. Right. Yeah, it is. If you look at the last picture, it goes. Is there an apartment there? Mm-hmm. The yeah, size. it's a little attached. I don't know if it's an apartment. Are they building it's... back an apartment? Or because they actually want to build it bigger. So, Ms. Bourne, are you indicating that the proposed garage doors should be very similar oh, this is... in design to these? I would like it, but if it's not historic, I don't know if I, that holds any water for what you know, bringing back something of this historic character back, if they're going to demolish it and rebuild it. I mean, I would I'm I would happy like to that. share any of your comments with the applicants. Yeah. Um, I don't believe that we're going to be able to do that in this setting okay. consistently because of, of their studies and that sort of thing. I mean, um, Angela, my other comment would be that the front elevation with the gables going two ways would not be really a historic type front so I think that I would just ask them I mean I don't know we don't I mean you don't if people don't show up do you call everybody that doesn't show up and try to find them or do you let them do you write them a letter did they receive a letter saying their case was continued both both okay <laughs> They get a courtesy notice that they were continued, and then staff makes every effort to follow up and let them know what they need to do next. Okay. Would we like to continue this to the December meeting? Please. I move to, to, to continue HPCA 1500136 to the December 2nd meeting. Second. A motion from Joe Meacham, second from uh, Jennifer Bourne to continue this item. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> All right. That, I, that entire item is continued. No other new business today. Communications and reports. Um, nothing in particular to report. Lots of administrative approvals. Happy to answer questions if anyone has any. Um, no withdrawals or administrative closures to report. Uh, the Marion Hotel will go to City Council on um, October, I'm thinking it's actually October 27th that it goes to Council. It's been heard once, it's been introduced, and it'll go back a second time for adoption. Were there any issues in its initial presentation? Nope, it was presentation? consent docket and just okay. went right on through. Um, nothing to report from Board of Adjustment. Um, same follow-up on um, the Marion that went to Planning Commission as well. Um, Any items from our Municipal Counselor? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Our next regularly scheduled meeting is November the 4th, 2015 at 2 p.m. Uh, in this room. New applications for this meeting have already been received uh, by October the 6th. And new information on the projects continued from today's meeting uh, must be submitted by staff at, to staff at 4 p.m. on Tuesday, October 13th. Our next regularly scheduled workshop uh, 
is December the 8th, 2015, at 1130 at 420 West Main, Suite 900. Uh, any items from commissioners on this um, glorious day of garages? <laughs> All right. I had mentioned to Katie that maybe, you know, maybe we need to pursue maybe supplementary design ideas or a summary specifically about garages. It doesn't seem, I don't, it doesn't seem to be slowing down. The more I think these areas continue to develop and get the prices and have the people come in, it's just going to be more garage. I mean, we're just going to lose most, I mean, we could lose. A lot, a lot more. We're losing them faster every month, it seems like. So, I don't know, Katie, would, what would you, I mean, do you think that would be helpful to people? Are you kind of picturing like a, a pattern book or some, some more well, kind of a, concrete examples of? With, you know, some ideas, some sketch kind of ideas or something mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. show, you know, this is what's appropriate. Right. Yeah. A little more reinforcement so that they're not looking for a big guideline trying to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, um, you know, we haven't had anything in, to that level of detail as far as the, the pattern book kind of thing and the examples, but um, I, I would not be opposed to having something available for people that's more visual that right. says, here are some good examples of new garages that have been approved that are what the commission is, is hoping to see. And, and, and maybe even a summary of the history saying, you know, that in 2013, due to the increased amount of garage, mm -hmm. you know, submittals and the, and the size and the, you know, having mm -hmm. consistent, you know, having the commission be consistent, that they were changed. Mm -hmm. So that people understand that it was a problem, and, and I think also to help to help somehow communicate why that was a problem. Right. I, you know, I think right. that you know you see rules and and I don't know. I'm always asking right. why about rules. Rules are just stupid rules, but they right. exist for a reason. And if there's something that could help explain, why? you know, why it it can't fill up your entire backyard, there's a reason for that. Right. And that's why I think that that just including that history there would really help mm -hmm. people understand that. You know, yes, lots of things were approved. In that doesn't necessarily mean things are going to be approved in the future and the reasons for this were... Right. Just because one was built down the street five years ago doesn't necessarily mean you get to build I mean, the, the same thing. I just didn't have any reason not to give people... It was a, Rita, would you say that based on history? I mean, it got to the point where you really couldn't tell anybody no because we didn't have enough in the guidelines to support that. They just got bigger and bigger. And well, I think what we can do if you're talking about visuals as well, I'd be willing to draw a little garage right. and show an actual car in it <laughs> right? and lawnmowers and things like that where Neela just, I mean, she lives in a historic district. She has a garage. They have a small car and a big car, she just said, and she fits her, right. her I mean, that was lawnmower in there. So it, it can work. We have three architects. I mean, we could probably do a draft in, you know, in three or four hours and have staff maybe put that together and then do some little sketches and have it doesn't have to be, I mean, even if it could be something that the neighborhoods had so that they could, you know, give mm -hmm. it to people and it would be available. It doesn't have to be extensive. But it just seems like this is not going to stop. Mm -hmm. No. I agree. That's my suggestion. It's a good idea. What's the, uh, I agree. What's, I wonder what a good plan of action is for that. Um, Should we have another committee? Yeah. <laughs> we'll start a committee for that. We'll start a garage committee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We can, we can probably look at, um, I actually intended to, to put on here to look at rescheduling that December 8th workshop because that's the same week as the committee commission workshop. It's, this is on Wednesday and that's on Friday. So maybe we move that up earlier and spend some time in a workshop talking about some garage ideas that would be helpful for applicants. So yeah, I think people come in and, you know, they are just trying to accommodate their vehicles and their use of their property and that sort of thing and and then don't quite understand why they can't have the space that they yeah, think I, they need. And it, the history, the history and, and, you know, could be a letter from the chair saying this is the history and then this is our mission is that we want to make sure that new garages fit into the neighborhood and, and you know, we understand we have vehicle issues but please remember the commission cannot 
use that as a reason to make the garage bigger. Some things I think if they, people saw that. Contentious meetings. Wow. Thanks for being gone, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Available later this afternoon. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Good for him. Uh, any other items from commissioners? Any items from citizens? Here's no. With that, I will adjourn us today. <laughs>